Hello everyone and welcome back to Always Watching. Today we're discussing American Fiction, soon to premiere on Amazon Prime Video. So briefly, American Fiction follows Monk, a jaded and frustrated novelist who's tired of the establishment that profits from black entertainment. To prove his point, he uses a pen name to write a very sort of outlandish and offensive book that just so happens to garner him a lot of success. The movie stars a number of heavyweight actors such as Tracy Ellis Ross, Sterling K. Brown, Jeffrey Wright, and the list goes on and on. And this movie feels like an elevated Tyler Perry movie. It's basically like everything we wish he would produce, everything that we wish he would support. Like, this is it, you know? And my heart breaks saying that. And this is the directorial debut by Core Jefferson. He's written for a number of television and movies, notably Watchmen. And this movie is based on the novel Erasure but was renamed American Fiction because a lot of the movies and books about the black experience are exactly that, exaggerated fictions. And I do think as black artists, there's always this pressure to give the public what it wants. And as much as people love the aesthetic, they don't really like what comes with it. And these industries have made it okay to basically indulge in different cultures without really caring or trying to understand what people actually go through. What makes Monk's book a success is it makes it okay for people to be entertained by something they know nothing about, right? Like the people who are most enjoying this novel are people that have no idea what it's like to live the type of life that Monk is describing in this book. So I thought this movie was a great commentary in terms of examining how a lot of the literature and a lot of the movies that are made famous, especially in the mainstream media, are not by accident, right? It's heavily diluted, it's heavily filtered by these industries, and you have these gatekeepers that pretty much decide not only what's okay to criticize and what's okay not to criticize, but what's okay to exploit and what is a bridge too far. So starting with what I liked, as I said, I love the script. It's so clever. There's so many one-liners, like it's just really deeply satisfying. And it never really, again, it never turns into like this corny caricature. Like it feels like a movie you've seen before, but also not. And so I thought Jeffrey Wright as Thelonious Monk was really good. He's a very strong character actor. And this is the first, well, not the first time, but this was a very good lead role for him. And again, he never, it never turns corny or weird. And so we're introduced to him as this arrogant, self-involved, self-obsessed individual who lives in his own echo chamber. And he is a professor. It seems like he's very jaded. His students don't like him. The faculty doesn't like him. The only reason he has a job is because he's talented, but he hasn't actually published anything in a number of years. That is, of course, until a sudden death in his family puts him in kind of a desperate financial situation to publish something, to publish anything in order to support his mother who is suffering from Alzheimer's. And Monk is like, I don't know how to describe him. He's basically like the white sheep of his family. Like he's the favorite child, whereas all his siblings were like the black sheep of the family. And so he basically is forced to confront and deal with individuals, i.e. his family, that he's been trying to avoid, right, his entire life. And I thought Sterling K. Brown as Clifford, as his brother, was really fantastic because he's also someone living a double life. And despite this family's success, they're totally broke. And you get the sense that a lot of the reason that they have not been able to find happiness, even though they have been able to find some material success, is because they, they live these double lives, right? They're inauthentic. They don't let people in. And this sort of family situation kind of forces them to change. The dynamics between the different characters was really nice. It could be because they're very seasoned actors and so there was a lightness to it, there was an ease to it that felt very relatable. I thought the relationship between Monk and Coraline was really good too. Like the more sort of famous he becomes, the more frustrated he gets in his everyday life. Like he has this one line where it's like, you're my girlfriend, not my bookkeeper or something along those lines. So he basically like, it's basically about a man trying to come to terms with his own hypocrisy. And so desperate and baroque, he ends up basically writing this book, My Pathology, later turned to the F word, kind of as a joke. Like he kind of as a joke, kind of not as a joke under the pseudonym Stagger Lee. And he sends it to his literary agent and he pretty much doesn't think it's gonna get published, but he kind of low key wants it to get published. And turns out people want to buy the rights 
for like millions of dollars. And as desperate as he is for this money, he's almost offended by the success, right? Like he tries to sabotage it and he really can't believe like the world we live in, right? Like why on earth would anyone want to buy this? And a lot of his resentment and sort of the inspiration for writing this novel comes from Issa Rae's character, a woman named Sintara. And I thought she was very well written because at first she, she gives you one impression, but towards the end, you end up having like a totally different opinion of her. And so she basically writes this novel that is just a whirlwind success and Monk hates it, right? He accidentally hears her reading an excerpt of the novel and he automatically dismisses it. He never wants, he doesn't read it even, he just dismisses it automatically. And because the movie is told from his perspective, he's, he becomes a very unreliable narrator. Like you're not sure if his criticisms are valid or if he's as equally sort of pretentious and as annoying as the people that he's criticizing, right? Because it seems Sintara has written a book that people love and it could be that it's super offensive, right? Like we find out that she's from a very privileged background writing about people that she knows nothing about. And this is something that, yeah, people have been offended by. Like if you remember the novel American Dirt, like this was, I believe, a non-Mexican author writing about the immigrant experience. And it was a massive success. Like it was a huge success, but people felt it was trauma porn. They felt she had no right to, you know, touch this subject matter. So it could be that, or it could be that it's really good. Right? And he kind of, you know, judged a book by its cover, ironically. And they, you know, as fate would have it, they end up serving as a jury, like on this jury together. So Monk is literally living this double life. Like on one hand, he's doing this press for this book that he hates. On the other hand, he's kind of living his own life. And so this double life collides when he just so happens to be on a jury with Sentara. And they probably have one of the most compelling conversations in this movie. And he makes a comment saying that nobody reads a white novel and thinks that's the only experience, right? Like people tend to give white authors more flexibility. Like they kind of understand there are multiple sort of experiences they can have. Whereas his argument was with the black experience, people will read something and assume that is true for all of them. And she kind of looks at him being like, well, that just sounds like, that sounds like a you problem. And I think a lot of his frustration towards Centara, and this is true for a lot of artists, right? Like the idea that real art never sells is equally pretentious and it's equally weird, right? He hasn't really, really been able to find success like the same way that Centara has, right? He's always on the outside looking in. And so he hasn't been able to kind of manage it. And when he has found success, it's in the worst way possible. And so weirdly enough, she's equally sort of offended by his work. And a lot of the things that Monk is frustrated by, again, he's trying to live up to these expectations, but he, what he fails to realize is that a lot of these expectations are set by an industry that unfortunately values other types of art more than his. And you know, this book not only garners financial success, like it wins literary awards. And the people of course giving it these awards are these white people that find it to be so compelling and so interesting. So he ends up actually contributing to the thing that he hates. And so the whole movie is basically this man kind of coming to terms with his, his own hypocrisy, right? His own double standard and kind of really trying to assess, okay, like why, like, why do I think what I think? Punk is a fascinating character because again, he doesn't know it, but he actually does put himself kind of on a pedestal and he does see himself as a well-meaning person, but there's so many indications in the movie that maybe he's not, right? And I do think it's an interesting commentary how as artists, like, yes, you want to, you know, produce great art or things that you feel will contribute to society, but at the same time, you don't want to be disconnected from that society that you're trying to represent and you're trying to help. And that seems to be like Monk's sort of situation. So overall, I highly recommend this movie, but you guys let me know what you think and until next time.